Um, Pranam Dar, Khoisa uh, Kaidiv. Uh, my name is Robert Firth. I'm based, as you can probably tell, here in Cardiff. Um, I've been told to thank Historic Scotland, which seems ironic. <laughs> well, my name is Robert Firth, so perhaps that's the reason yeah. why I'm Welsh. Um, I, it's funny how we've overlapped. A lot of the stuff you've put up is very similar to what I'm putting up, but in a completely different way. At the RBA, we're doing similar sort of research, but our research is based into the next generation and how the RBA deals with the new generation who are very different to the way I was brought up and even generations in between. Um, I'm, well, I'll be president of the Royal Society of Architects in Wales by September, which is for the second time. I'm also an RBA councillor, so in our council, similar to the RCS council, we're discussing these all the time. And I think for your profession, just as much as our profession, what happens in the future is going to make a hell of a difference in terms of the new generation coming through. So I'm going to be concentrating primarily on Generation Z, which I'll explain now in a second. Um, let me just go back one. Seems to have jumped. Oh, well, we'll leave it there. Um, first warning a lot of this presentation is about generalizations. And unfortunately, talking about generations is about the only way. What we're trying to detect are trends. And this really gives an indication of how the trends look and where we fit into the generations that are coming through. Um, my parents are the silent generation. Respect for authority, loyal, hard work. Um, both my parents involve all those areas, um, and they brought us up in a particular way. Um, I'm a baby boomer, so I'm next to long, exploring, optimistic, work-centric. Unfortunately for me, work was a massive part of my life and for my wife, so we both worked incredibly hard to get to wherever we wanted to get to. I always wanted to be an architect, and luckily I managed to qualify as one. Um, but the generations afterwards have been brought up differently because what was important to us is different to what's important to my parents. So my 18-year-old son, Thomas, is a Generation Z. Mistrust, mistrust in the political system at the bottom there, always connected, um, and a multitasker. For those of you who've got children the same age, they understand where they come from. They've also come up, been brought up by us to be supported, um, to be treated in many ways as an equal, as opposed to you behave yourself, you're a child, you speak you speak when you're spoken to, um, and they've also been given almost more than in a generation, allowed to be connected, almost nurtured in the way they take things forward, and praised almost for everything. The win-lose thing has gone out of the system in many ways. Everyone's a winner these days. So they feel entitled. Now that's going to bring forward a new generation which is very different to how we brought up. And my question today is how does that fit into a profession, especially professions Ours was formed in 1834, which has initially Victorian values, but now is moving into an area which needs to change rapidly. So that's the basis of the generation we've got. And the RIVA, um, Owen Ludo, who's on council, was born before 1936. So when we have discussions in the RIVA, we've got a few people on council who are in this sector, Generation Y, Millennial, the discussions are extraordinary and can get pretty heated at times because different values from each other. That. For some reason, that came in the wrong place. Anyway, Generation Z. Um, big issue, this was a Time magazine front. Uh, millennials are lazy, entitled narcissists who still live with their parents. <laughs> As I said, these are generalizations. Uh, but for a lot of people, absolutely. And when I've done this presentation before, a lot of the audience have been nodding their head immediately. But they then went on to say, why are they will save us all? And this is because I think we've imbued the new generation with some ethics, coming back to your point, um, which means that they have a different look at it, quite optimistic, but also very realistic in how they view the world. They're like pets who do work sometimes. Again, <laughs> massive generalization, but that's the way they look at it. So, understanding Generation Z, who are these people, um, and why do we need to understand them? Um, under 20, at the moment, they're the most connected generation ever. No surprise there. Most materially endowed, technological saturated, formally educated generation our world has ever seen. So coming back to the point just made, we are bringing forward people, uh, that, that generation now who are educated, are connected, they understand the world, they're very globally aware. My son, when I ask him about something I've seen on the news, he never watches television, he's already seen it. He may not know very much about it, but he knows everything that's happening out in the world. There's no depth necessarily to it, but he knows the issues. Digitally native, they have grown up working on these, 
more likely iPad, iPhone, etc. The speed demons, they want things now. If I can't operate something in front of him, he'll go and do it himself, if it's connected to an iPad or an iPhone. Not if it's DIY, because that doesn't happen. <laughs> but they want instant gratification in many ways, so they want a solution to the problem that they discovered. Entertainment addicts, as the ROBA, if we want to attract them into the ROBA, they don't want hard written stuff sent to them. They want it online, and they want it to be entertaining, something they can engage with, almost like a game, but it's something that they can actually interact with. And if we don't do that, it's like playing a disco to an empty room. It's not going to appeal to them at all. They like collaboration, but their collaboration is different to what I would term collaboration. Collaboration for me is getting into a room with a bunch of other like-minded or different-minded people and talking about things. They often sit on their own in a darkened room, but they'll talk online to others. And for them, that's still collaboration, but it's different to how I would see it. And then a final point, and again, this is very relevant for professions going forward, micro-miners. They don't want reams and reams, as I fall over, reams and reams of information. They like bite-sized pieces of information. They can get on board really quickly and move on to the next one. So if the ROBA doesn't communicate online in bite-sized chunks and quickly and entertain, we're in big trouble. So my worry going forward is we need to engage with these because they're the next generation coming through. For those who know um, <laughs> <laughs> Maslow's laws, Maslow's laws is built on food, water, shelter, wood. That's the basic installation for human life. If you haven't got those, you're in big trouble. My son we went skiing one year and he, he went down to the reception area, which was in the dark, cold, nothing happening down there. They didn't have any water on tap, nothing like that, so he just sat there, but it had Wi-Fi. So as far as he was concerned, this was far more important than that. <laughs> sure that so again, we must understand this and take advantage of it. So what do Generation Z need? We've already discussed connected. Not just because they've always been connected, but because of FOMO, fear of missing out. If they're not connected, something's happening somewhere that they don't know about and they will never find out. They will find out, but they need it now. So they need to be connected for that. Speed, we've already discussed. They're impatient to get information, and they don't want reams and reams of stuff. My grandfather suddenly sits down with Thomas and starts explaining something in longhand after a while he starts falling asleep, because as far as he's concerned, this is not interesting. Get it to me quick, that's what I want. Collaboration, I don't want to explain. The ROBA find this a massively important area. Most generations Z can get information. They know by a click of a button, much quicker than I would, where to find that information and where to get knowledge. So knowledge is not an issue for them at all. They don't need to be a member of the ROBA to find knowledge, as I did, and that's why I became a member of the ROBA. But what they do want is experience. They haven't got that. <clears throat> so they want mentoring, they want feedback, they want validation that I'm going in the right direction. They want to know that what, where they're going is the right way. So in the ROBA, we think mentoring is one of the most important things we can provide for the next generation coming through. Creativity, hallelujah, as architects, they like to be creative, so hopefully they'll all join and become architects. They also want purpose, so if they're going to be creative, it must give them something, which means they feel some validation for doing something that makes a difference. Visual, again, big tip for architects, digital, and a variety. And then the final one here, which I think is, again, very important. I don't think they're looking for one career anymore. My father sat me down very early on when I was about 14 when I said I wanted to be an architect. He was delighted. If you can be an architect, it's a good career. You stick with it all your life, and that's what you'll always be. And I always have been so far. My son has a completely different view on life. He enjoys writing, enjoys playing rugby, uh, he enjoys watching certain types of television. He's studying to be an astrophysicist. No idea why. But all these things he doesn't want to lose sight of. He'd like to do writing and be an astrophysicist and do everything else. Well, that's great. Something I couldn't even contemplate, but he's not going to give up on that. Generation Z don't see why they should have one career, they have a chance of having much more. So as a profession, we've got to attract them, but they'll want different careers within that profession. Um, and the other big issue for uh, Generation Z is they get it much quicker than we do. So this sort of scenario I'm sure happens all the time. If there isn't something available where they're going, even at that age, they will complain. And Generation Z will not shut up like I used to. They'll want to know questions and answers. So Thomas, when even when he's younger, would ask the most awkward questions, and you'd be <coughs> cringing, but they're inquisitive. Why not? And it's the way it should be. What don't they need? And this is a, where I'm coming to the problem for professions. 
I think they've got a very good on my French bullshit detector. They don't like fake, they want authenticity, they want proof, which is why politicians don't impress the new generations coming through. They want a different type of politician, not someone who promises there would be the earth and they can see through it. My wife is horrified that most of Thomas and his friends share everything, almost. She doesn't want to address going out, she doesn't want anything else going out of the house, she just wants to know that she's safe where she is. Thomas hasn't got that issue. He'll share almost everything online, the Facebook generation. Formal relationships, etiquette is diminishing. I do part three training at the Royal School of Architecture, and one of the biggest part three training issues for us is actually getting people to engage with each other, shake hands, look people in the eye, talk, and they just often don't know how to do that. Not because that's a big issue for them, uh, but because they've never really done very much of it. It's often done over this. Formal relationships are an issue, but again, for architects, we're probably the most informal professions. Maybe archaeologists is even more informal. <laughs> <laughs> Information they can get any time, and institutions. This is the biggest worry. They run more from politics because they don't trust it, and so therefore the politicians are losing out on membership now. They're just not joining. Religion is often a big turnoff for them as well, and corporations don't trust that. So again, big issue here for the professions going forward. Can we attract these into what we have formed? For architecture, I think, um, there are some plus points. It takes seven years to qualify as an architect, and if you want instant gratification, you want things in bite-sized chunks, and you want things all online, this is going to be a bit of a struggle for you. So that's a big issue for architecture. More of an issue, though, is can architecture track them? Architecture is digital, building information modeling we talked about, 3D printing, virtual environments. Tick. They'll love all that. Altruism, altruistic attitude. Designing healthcare, hospitals, designing special needs schools, sheltered housing, another big tick. Fast paced. In the future, most of the built environments can be manufactured, not built as such. So again, big tick. Creative, collaborative, connected. All those things architecture profession can do. So at the moment, it's all looking very good. But this is architecture headquarters, RBA called in place. Would they want to join something that was formed in 1834 and has most of the issues that the Victorian society would put together. So in council, we have a big council chamber. Everything's operated on minutes, motions, etc. They're not going to be interested in that at all. Why should they be? In fact, I'm not interested in very much. <laughs> so the future professions, I think, is an issue. If we were to set up an RBA now, and this is a question I've asked our council, what would it look like? It would not look like the RBA does at the moment because it's not formed in that time. So very different, certainly less rules, less formality, less things. My son isn't interested in his physical space. He's interested in how it looks like on his computer screen, but he's not interested in the space he sits in. So he can <laughs> sit in a complete mess or an empty desk. It doesn't matter. What's on there is the tidy bit, because that's what's in his mind. So the, the RBA does not need loads and loads of things to look at, pick up, feel, touch, whatever. It needs to be more online. It certainly needs to be faster. Uh, and it needs more flexibility to allow them to actually change and be seen to change the way the IBA takes forward. Connected, as we've already discussed, Gen Z do not join institutions. So again, big, big issue for us. Can we attract these people in? The future, and again, overlaps fundamentally what we've already discussed. These are the big challenges for architects in the future, the big, big challenges. How architects can affect both the built and the unbuilt environment. We need brilliant, intelligent, young, vibrant, energetic architects. Most of Gen Z can be architects without being a member of the RBA. They just need to qualify after seven years, have Architectural Registration Board, ARB, written after their name, and they can operate as an architect. Why would they want to join a fully duddy members club to become an architect? So for the RBA, this is a big, big issue. So we want great architects in the future to help with that, the big problems that are coming up, but they don't have to be a member of the RBA to do that. I don't know whether that's the same with the archaeological, but it, it's, it's a big issue for you, because if you can't attract them in, they may form their own society and do their own thing, uh, which is hell for the RBA, and it might be a very good thing for the future. <laughs> Generation Z are already online. They're the members of anything you want to be a member of. So she can get connected anywhere she wants. She'll do it much quicker than I will even though she's much younger than me, because she's probably far more intelligent than I am already in terms of getting her knowledge and getting, getting um, information quickly. We have to engage with them. We have to change to suit them. They're not going to change to suit us. So big question, future. 
Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.